A very warm welcome to all of you. I am architect Asta Kalya, assistant professor at APJ Institute of Technology, School of Architecture and Planning. I will be talking about various insight in this presentation based upon the representational ways in architectural thesis to help you reinforce the ways how you present in a thesis. And I'll be also talking about some major points to be noted. So the first one in the list is uh, case studies, observations on the case study. These are some of the common points which were there. And I mean, I'll just go through these points first. Uh, the first is plans were mostly copied from internet as it is in a way that it becomes a data collection and documentation instead of a case study or instead of a you know post data analysis. So by this meaning, I say that plans jo bhi aap dalte ho sheet mein, they are just you know taken from the resource jahan se aapko wo plan mila hai, agar aapne live case study mein kari hai, photo kich ke aapne directly plan dal diya hai, ya fir aapko aapne internet se study kiya hai, to usme bhi aapne sirf plan dal diya hai. But that is of no use if you have not done any post data analysis of that plan which has been available, uh, which has been given to you. So it is recommended that you bifurcate that plan, you study that plan, you go to the depth of it, you study the spaces and create it graphically instead of just writing about it. Second point is appropriateness of case study and identifying common points and linkages between case study and your project. Now, this is a very important point because uh, some of the case studies are like you only have to infer from a partial um, case study of that uh, project, right? So, if you have a very big project, you have a very project, there is some IIT campus, and you just have to take an inference for, uh, from, an, uh, from some block, right? So, you will have to uh, tell to the jury that my scope of case study is also limited. I am going to uh, take a particular block in my case study rather than just, you know, filling the whole sheet with, with the whole uh, data, which is not relevant to your own topic. Third is doing the comparative analysis rightly, which is, which was missing in a lot of places. So comparative anal analysis doesn't only means, you know, you just, you are giving information of uh, a particular project which is given to you. That doesn't mean you are just telling us about, okay, this is situated in Delhi, this is situated in Calcutta, and this is situated in Rajasthan. This is not a comparative analysis. This is just information that you are giving in tabular form. What we are asking is uh, make parameters for comparative analysis, judge every project, have a crit on every project based upon those common parameters. Then last, but not the, uh, no, not the last, uh, okay, circulation analysis. Circulation analysis is also one thing that was missing in a lot of case studies, like you all have studied them, but there was a certain place where it was missing. Uh, then comes generating parameters of the case study, which I have already talked about. Then is representation of case studies. Now, again, representing a case study is a very intelligent thing to do because you always, again, just put information over there and it is up to us. What do we take it from your, uh, you know, your, your own sheet? So it is always recommended that you convert your information into graphics and illustrations which are relevant to your own case study. So I'll be showing examples of the same in the next slides. So like this in this slide, uh, you can, you know, this it's, it's the same thing. What they have done is it's from different colors, they have marked different, different uh, signages. So this implies that you should highlight the relevant thing in that case study also, not only in your project, but you should highlight those things in your case studies also that are, you know, uh, very holistic in manner. Something like this, where you are, just denoting some circulation patterns on a same, you know, case study or a same 3D. This is the another one. You have broke, uh, you, uh, you have sort of broken the, uh, you know, 
the facade of that particular building you you are telling through graphics now i'll just elaborate upon one of the case studies this is taken from coa's best uh, thesis panels which are also available in our library so i have just scanned those and kept in uh, in this presentation so what this person has done this project is about an artisan village or community so what this person has done this is the basis of its pres uh, of his case study uh, presentation so this whole panel has five case studies so one can not even imagine that five case study aap ek sheet mein kaise daloge but what has been done here is that uh, he has selected a particular character a particular point which that person wants to infer from a case study as an ideal and then uh, he or she has only touched upon that particular project so for functional character this person has uh, studied khamir craft resource center in gujarat for village uh, for village redevelopment this is the case study for studying the vernacular system this is the case study so for studying existing function this is the case study existing function is the same side he or she is working upon by the way then this this is art festivals for this uh, he she is uh, going to study is kochi muziris uh, bnl in kochi so what is happening over here this case study for the whole project is becoming holistic because sometimes we do not find everything in one case study right so we can fragment it in different parameters to achieve our goal so over here the first one is for functional attributes for which this person has studied khamir craft resource center just the plan just the sections and over here he, uh, he has done the mapping of uh, spaces of functional spaces how many open spaces are there so there is a color code for that uh, uh, how many semi open spaces are there which is orange and then how many closed spaces are there apart from that uh, he has also built uh, uh, the map for a built uh, category so by this you know that you know how you can actually study a particular built up which is already there existing and inferences goes like this i'll just read it out quickly like interrelationship between closed open semi open spaces to create natural and fresh working environment so this is something that you can manifest in your uh, i mean in your own project and you can keep these things in mind when you are designing so that are called inferences over here so now similarly like uh, building modules are effectively placed in such a way to form narrow pathways and shaded spaces open spaces are connected by shaded pathways dwellings repeat to form clusters which represents settlement of a village now you can even add further to this there's no end to it that is your own perspective how much you go into the depth of a topic now the second one was as i mentioned was vernacular system so is puri case study mein he is not talking about planning not talking about anything else but the vernacular systems that are used right like adobe masonry stone masonry door window etc so you can fragment your case studies in this manner also especially people who are studying i mean who are doing mixed land use maybe urban projects you know for village redevelopment this goes and so on so forth for art festivals and for this this is for the existing features now this particular existing feature is this person's uh, thesis topic only so that becomes a site analysis altogether right yeah before i go further i would also like to mention over here that if you are you know creating parameters and doing a comparative based upon those parameters uh, those parameters can be like visual aspect of a project it can be height to volume ratio it can be talking about your surroundings the foreground or background of the study uh, the area program which is very important the placement of the case study some thrust areas some x factor of the project maybe a driving force of the project a uh, form evolution or you know how uh, how a particular thing is built so doing all these things are better than just putting information available on the 
uh, that paper. So this all will give you a little chance to analyze things better. Not only this, but a case study, you know, you can have shortcomings too. It is not that uh, in a case study, you only have to look at good things. You can also look at shortcomings and some flaws, which you can highlight in your comparative studies. That, okay, these are some things which I'm not going to do because these are flaws. You can discuss that also in a reading. And as far as uh, an inference is concerned, uh, I would like to say that, you know, inference uh, process is, you know, a very, very vital part in an architectural design process, you know, because it is something which makes us realize that what we are designing, it is sometimes, you know, uh, it sort of creates an intent and content of your uh, thesis. Also, uh, you should uh, always write down and try to convert it into graphically all the inferences also. Okay, so um, next next is something, uh, I mean, the last point in case study, I would like to mention that uh, in existing scenario, like in this, uh, like in this slide, existing scenario has become its own case study. So similarly, even if a project has a design proposal available or that project has been done, even I mean, I think personally, you can even take that as a case study that is that this is something which has been built, which has been proposed on the site. And maybe you can find some flaws in it. Maybe you can take that as a case study. So that, again, depends on topic to topic and scope of the project. Now, going further, the second observation was climatological aspect where the students are just, you know, uh, making charts of uh, precipitation, some wind charts, some sun bar chart, which are actually just occupying space on your sheet. It is just to fill the space and those are not really, uh, sorry, somebody speaking. Okay. So those points are, you know, those things are not really helping the jury to understand why they have been there. So climatic analysis charts become very irrelevant unless depicted or applied in your presentation on your sheets. So like you can represent the applied uh, sun path diagram like this in a broader view. You can have arrows coming for denoting the prevailing wind direction because you cannot always say that, okay, wind is coming from here only, right? So you can maybe have some little sketches of the manifestation in forms like there, uh, uh, I mean, if someone's topic is cold climate, mein hai, maybe you can suggest some room wall there. So you just sketch room wall and that will suggest that this is a passive strategy. So it will give you a cold climate ka view of the jury. Ko de dega. Then uh, some active strategies, maybe some green building design principles you want to follow, some climate responsive attributes you want to follow or some statistics which are related to that site climatologically, but not those charts particularly. So for example, over here, this is again taken from those thesis panels only, where this person has uh, denoted on the side the prevailing wind direction, and here is the legend, which arrow is denoting what. So this is a solar radiation exposure. This is the prevailing wind direction over here. This is view from the sites, views through the sites, trees within uh, views of the right i i cannot read it very much clearly these these pdfs will be shared with you also towards the end of this presentation so one is this and other one is over here from these sketches like orientation kaise honi chahiye uh, cross ventilation ki zarurat padegi aapko yahan pe shaded open spaces hain building roof shading honi chahiye you know these kind of things you can always uh, go in depicting for a climate analysis rather than just putting charts. Some sections like this. Now, this is a section which is, I would say, is generated towards the end of your project. Like the whole project has been built and then you are making this kind of section. But what you can do is actually make a little section as a concept. You will be using... Uh, stack effect, you will be using solar chimneys or something like that. So you can use those as a uh, concept. Third is regarding the site analysis in which uh, the major point was key plans were missing. Uh, site plan analysis, mein ek to, 
all the pictures that students had were not actually relating to the site how to denote how to actually you know let the jury know that which photo is taken from where so you should uh, uh, i mean that is something up to you you can represent yourself but make sure that is clear to the jury that where that particular photo is taken from and what is the content of that photo is it relevant or is it irrelevant some photos were actually irrelevant so um, further adding on to this the urban context was majorly missing where the regional forces or was were not taken care of like when we talk about site analysis that doesn't mean you are just talking about the boundary in it that also means you are talking about out of the boundary just the surroundings also like how are you approaching your site how are you um, you know taking a, a bus to your site a, a car to your site where are you parking what are the swot analysis of that so swot should also include the these kind of uh, aspects which were missing majorly in mostly projects and there was also uh, the fourth point is that the autocad drafted site plan was not there in a lot of drawings so it is suggested that even if you are using a google map for reference you should overlay an autocad plan over it highlight it in a manner that all your aspects are done in one plan rather than just you know making different uh, also apart from this you should uh, like in site analysis sheet you should always talk about the thrust areas when you are talking about site analysis like things that need to emphasize on a specific area and which is a driving force for your designing that can be a limitation also that can be an opportunity also for your site and also talk about the site potential like what is the site potential of you know how uh, i mean what is the visual accessibility of the site what is the road in front what is the foreground that you are getting so like in front of you on this slide you can see a figure ground plan of the same site a plot ratio uh, this is some energy plan this is some view corridors land use plan edges traffic so you can bifurcate your own site into different parts to explain what are the uh, you know site uh, surroundings and things look like uh, other than this maybe you can have a huge one uh, site and you can overlay all these things in different color codes this is one of the example like uh, this person has uh, over here figure ground map of built structures then this is the land use map which you get from a development authority this is a transit map it's, it's a landscape map so these are some pointers that you should write also which was missing as a uh, i mean as an observation from a lot of projects that you had submitted that is the direction of nearby landmarks were not clear which are leading to and maybe leading away in reference to the site for example there is a nearby station there is a nearby rail railway station so you need to mention in which direction and maybe fr from the site how much far it is so now over this this is not a very clear picture in that sense but i will try to explain over here what is happening because when you are back to college and everything is fine for you to come back you can always go to library and see these panels in the way they are printed over there so like what has happened is over here if you all can just see my cursor moving can anybody just confirm yes yes astamani yes it can be seen it's it can be seen it can be seen so uh, like in this photograph this is the site plan over here and this red uh, gradient kind of a thing you can see here so this photograph is taken from this direction standing and looking at the, this direction similarly this point is over here and looking at this direction uh similarly with this similarly with this and this is kind of denoting the photograph standing on its side so it's kind of a relatable uh, you know scenario over here rather than just you know criss crossing your site in terms of that or maybe you, you all are free to choose the way which is more clearer than this maybe that is all up to you this is just a reference for that now this is another one like site inventory and zoning you can go like this you can have a series of photographs like this now this is very interesting part over here on the right side which is talking about 
right analysis and how you can uh, you know actually work upon uh, you know um, let me go to the next slide like yes so now what like what has been done here is that in this particular slide the riverfront edges is explained so with this particular you know process this is a process in front of you this is an evolution this is you know trying different options so what you can do you can just take a piece of paper as a concept you know you you can start drawing different shapes you can start drawing different combinations you can do hit and run methods and then maybe those process will lead you with the, a particular logistics and logics added to it that will lead you automatically to the you know outcome that you are looking for like yahan pe bhi it pura in, har ek uh, you know kya kahenge isko har ek option ke sath you know it, this person has interaction level with i mean or or ye jo option hai iske kya particular features hain talking about that that this kind of process will automatically you know lead to selection of the outcome itself so you can derive your own process also here now uh, third aspect of it is like you can also refer to a information like this is a paper yang 2002 slash fact 1992 so this must be a paper right so this person has referred to this paper over here as a source which is talking about the parametric evaluation criteria of successful river front regeneration process and considerations so this must be a paragraph which is written in this paper right or maybe some flow chart was also there but what this person has done is converted that particular information into a flow chart converted that information into a very interactive kind of a visual flow chart which is something interesting to look at then you can uh, give images to major pitfalls over here in the site spot analysis mein don't write spot so much big you know that your spot analysis actually hidden behind the spot ka font right then uh, these are see the kind of signages which are used now this is also one of the interesting the fourth observation which is regarding the area program which is very common point which was uh, you know written by a lot of faculty that it was not matching the project the area program was not matching the project why because the case studies were not then well maybe and maybe you, you have not Uh, you know thought it uh, completely through and don't you know take it lightly because in the next stage you are going to show us zoning and concept which is something you cannot do without a area program so over here on this slide these are some of the types uh, where you can you know um, how you can use area program how you can represent area program so over here it is like proposed program may तीन चीजों में डिवाइड कर दिया लाइक कोर फंक्शन सपोर्टिव फंक्शंस एंड एलाइड फंक्शन तो कोर फंक्शन इज लाइक स्टूडियो पॉटरी थिएटर फैसिलिटी पेंटिंग एंड पेंटिंग एंड पेंटिंग फैसिलिटी स्किल डेवलपमेंट सेंटर एंड हियर ही हैज सॉर्ट ऑफ डिपिक्टेड द यूजर टाइप लाइक आर्टिस्ट आर्टिजन्स विजिटर्स टूरिस्ट कैन बी यू सो यू कैन मेक योर एरिया प्रोग्राम एज यू नो सिंपल एज यू वॉन्ट जस्ट डू नॉट follow you know the 90s template of area program where you just write the name of the area and then the uh, what is that area is going to be the the quantity similarly this can come in a later stage but also you can develop this in a zoning time also that you are creating these kind of levels and you are marking different colors to it like basement basement mein cold storage hai uh, there is this um, grading and sorting hall uh, some chambers uh, loading and unloading things like that so you can create a uh, area program like this also just na denote bhi kar rahe ho sath ke sath bata bhi rahe ho so it becomes very interactive and uh, visually pleasing now talking about the last observation which was the overall representation of the whole sheet some uh, this particular uh, i think crit has been given to a lot of lot of student maybe 70% of the people and this is something that is also again as an architectural student you have been you know thesis is something that you have to showcase all the five years or 
whatever you have studied till now so even if you are uh, showing us a sheet if the way you were composing your panel the way you were you know composing your own sheet tells a lot about you so you can arrange sheets you can arrange different uh, you know patterns which are okay to you which you think is go going to be you know nice for your own project then uh, so there could be a background choice you can choose uh, some colors that you want to go for you can go for a grid kind of a layout you can go for for a single image and then you can talk about it on on the side of it maybe you can have a blended approach where there is a huge 3d in, in the middle and above is a plan or something like that so this is something you can establish for your own but we wanted to actually encourage you on doing this now thesis look at your thesis you know as a journey like thesis and a research journey which is going along with visuals how you want us to see it visually and you are talking to that so we are hearing you and we are looking at something which is going in harmony with what you are speaking so that is very important you can choose your own palette you can choose your own visual hierarchy like where you want our eye to go from uh, the la uh, the most important point one of this is it's a, it's a very uh, small point but important one that you should minimize text you know minimize the text on your presentation board altogether because write a short and concise concept statement and add a very brief explanation if needed don't waste your time on composing elongated descriptive text or just copy paste it just convert them into infographics or visuals try to <laughs> somebody uh, i think mute sorry with you yeah i did that ma'am okay then uh, after that don't ornament it usko sajao nahi itna ki koi bhi information hum dekh hi nahi pae itna bhi clutter nahi karna hai usko then uh, how do you want others to see your thesis project is again that i have already discussed about uh, so you can maybe you know uh, use your words maybe have just one quote and then start your journey so it should be a visual journey also and hearing journey also. now i'm going to sh uh, show you some uh, some of the just examples that you can refer to so this is kind of a grid layout which is happening over here this is a blended layout you know i hope you can differentiate between so this is following a single tone maybe choosing some colors that you are sticking to that all your plans go in the same tone all your sheet are sheets are planned in the same way i'll just go through these sheets you just observe them see the kind of symbols which are used showing the evolution of this industrial river front this is a palette which is taken for the whole panel so puri sheet belongs to a particular person the sheet is telling itself only that i belong to somebody these kind of maps and these kind of infographics just quick sketches very quick sketches these are not going to take much time of yours see this kind of site analysis you can have some zoomed views like this you can have this kind of you know renderings this is on a later stage but since it is black and white still it is looking so clean this is one of the sheet which is you know how you can i think this is a hand drafted uh, site plan maybe and then this has been scanned and put in photoshop usko aise layout karke this is such an easy thing to do but it looks so holistic and you know once you look at it you get it all this is something very interesting like having a model of, uh, having a section showing up with model this is the site this is a site elevation here is the section line and this is the detail of it so it's kind of going hierarchy now this is another interesting site over here uh, slide wherein this particular chart is a comparative analysis in itself having the inferences also in it so like if you have an observation or an inference why to write down you know why can why not to sketch So it's like it's showing this is a lack of proper open and green spaces. So this is an observation. 
and this is a sketch which is supporting this observation right so as an inference you have drawn a common gray showing that there are no green or open spaces and to have a solution for it there, there is a conceptual diagram which has been proposed so it becomes very holistic and very you know it shows some evolution it shows your th thought and critical thinking on the other hand this is something which is uh, very you know um, just an example to show you how you can represent this is again some exonometric views of showing the levels and plans it's a site plan rendering over here now this is interesting over here which you are looking in the center is uh, this person is designing something for from like uh, those you know containers the huge containers are there it's uh, i think that so these are some options that this person is trying and then coming to the final one so you can do this with your projects also you can make models you can make block models try some forms try some shapes and then go ahead this is another this is a very easy doing rendering on sketchup and it gives a very conceptual good look to it See, these are some charts like over here it is saying well connected and safe mobility for all but showing it with a graphical like this a sketch like this is much more convenient and a good option to do again repeating over here talking about sections these are some of the some of the references which you can you know show your sections of कोई एग्जिस्टिंग साइट एनालिसिस का सेक्शन है उस रोड पे आपने खड़े होकर ऐसे पर्सपेक्टिव में फोटो लिया एंड देन यू आर मेकिंग अ सेक्शन ऑन दैट रोड ओनली सो इट बिकम्स सो यू नो होलिस्टिक व्हेन यू लुक एट इट दिस इज मे बी दिस कैन बी अ प्रपोजल सेक्शन व्हिच इज देयर ऑलवेज हैविंग कार्स एंड बसेस एंड यू नो पीपल इन सेक्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ कमिंग टू द अदर इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट व्हिच इज स्केड्यूलिंग एंड टाइम मैनेजमेंट ऑफ योर ओन थीसिस uh this is something which is very you know I, i am basically giving a food for your thought you can always design it the way you want so the first point is that always schedule the plan a plan b already exists so what is plan b here plan b is something that we are going to give you plan b is something that your conceptual and zoning uh, presentation is going to be on third may that is plan b which you already have to do plan is something that you are planning for yourself you are planning ahead of the time which is given to you you are clear in your mind you know your you know your speed you know how you know fast you are how slow you are so you have to plan accordingly then identifying and fixing milestones for yourself in a timetable way make a huge chart of dates make a huge chart of timetable like there used to happen in school times also so you make a huge chart of that when you want to talk to your guide when you want to you know i mean those slots are already fixed by the way but you can always re, re, i mean that was just an example and apart from that you can always say ki okay now i'm going to work on plan now i'm going to work on presentation now i'll invest some time on exploring some representation now i'm going to watch some video i'm going to read something so you have to give a particular time slot also that will really help you third point is leaving time for rehearsal which is very important where you can where you can not where you should give your time for rehearsal that is something like if a jury asks something so you'll always know where is that on the sheet otherwise what happens is sometimes you are so much you know in into work you are so much busy in the end of you know scenario that you forget where i have uh, you know put that table on you know us time pe jo confusion hoti hai you can always uh, cope up with that uh, uh, with the rehearsal then the fourth point is backward planning backward planning is something i'm going to explain with this sample schedule over here so backward planning is something ki aap start karo july se plan karna like july se wapas yahan april tak jo backward uh, karo time table जैसे आपको मॉडल बनाने में एक हफ्ता चाहिए दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन प्रोजेक्ट टू प्रोजेक्ट आपका अर्बन लेवल का प्रोजेक्ट है आपका साइट लेवल छोटी है बड़ी है डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दैट गिव योर सेल्फ अ वीक फ्रॉम द फाइनल प्रेजेंटेशन यू ऑल नो टेंटेटिव डेट यू नो कि मान लो कि पांच जुलाई है कोई इट कुड बी एनी यू कैन गिव योर अ डेट 
and then you can plan accordingly backwards like preparing for a presentation in model making minimum one week from the major jury setting up final sheets uh, freezing development is very important now there is a stage when you are just you know working on plans and you know you are not stopping so you will not find much time to render them फिर फटाफट प्रिंट निकाल के हैंड रेंडर करोगे यू नो सो देर शुड बी अ टाइम वेर यू टेल योर सेल्फ की इसके बाद प्लान पे काम नहीं होना चाहिए इसके बाद एलिवेशन पे काम होना चाहिए या फिर इसके बाद आई एम गो ना जस्ट यू नो वर्क ऑन माई थ्री डी और माई मॉडल सो फिक्स दैट टाइम एंड इफ एवरी चेंज इज डन टिल दैट वेल एंड गुड इफ नॉट यू नो यू कैन ऑलवेज कंसल्ट योर गाइड एंड यू कैन ऑलवेज एड दो थिंग्स एज समथिंग विच यू आर अवेयर ऑफ ऑलरेडी right the third thing is reconsider changes then prelims schematic design and concept inference and application literature and case study so now you are somewhere in between these two uh, phases inference and application schematic design means uh, basically concept and zoning you we are you are somewhere here so you can decide and you know design according to this now something very important is that do not delete your work of any stage create copies and work on that on stages you know never ever delete anything maybe you can organize the things you want in your own way but i would like suggest have one folder for first stage have uh, have another folder for second stage so all the works are not deleted but carry forward beshak ek drawing hai अगर वो ड्राइंग को आपने फोल्डर वन में कॉपी किया फोल्डर टू में आप लेके जा रहे हो सो दैट बिकम्स अ कैरी फॉरवर्ड यू नो योर गाइड्स कैन आल्सो गाइड यू मोर ऑन दिस इन देयर वे बिकॉज एवरीबॉडी हैज देयर ओन वे ऑफ डूइंग इट सो यू कैन क्रिएट स्टेज वाइज फोल्डर्स एंड देन नथिंग गेट्स डिलीटेड सो इट गेट्स यू नो जस्ट गेट गेट्स कैरी फॉरवर्ड टू अनदर स्टेज एज अ डिफरेंट फाइल सो यू हैव एन इवोल्यूशन आल्सो रेडी दैट यू कैन यूज एक्चुअली टू you know present in a later stage in a sheet that what was i in the initial stage what was i in the first stage what my form looked like in a first stage and now by investing a lot of time stage by stage this is something which is looking at a later one now upcoming uh, your project is about concept and zoning and in this i would like to just show you some images and some references which you know are something for you for uh, i mean food for your thought and maybe you can brainstorm on them a concept can be a sketch to i mean concept is nothing you know there is no one way of doing it like this is the only right way of doing a concept concept is something which can be a sketch that can be a uh, you know sketch of your imagination that this is the image of my project and this is something i want to make so sketch it out first and then work on it drawing you know because what happens when you don't sketch see that drawing banane baithte ho to wo sketch erase ho jata hai dimag se so sketch it first maybe in fragments so that can be a sketch like this that can be a statement like form follows function maybe you are justifying that or maybe you are you are not justifying that you are claiming it wrong maybe right so it can be anything it can be a section like if your site is a contoured if your site is having some levels so then you are starting to think about it in a section and you just draw a rough section of it it can be start for uh, from zoning that again concept also depends upon different types of topic it can depend on strategies it can depend on theories some philosophies you are following it can depend on form evolution i mean a concept can be a form evolution where you're showing your site development of site phase by phase applying different theories on it you can show it like this uh, these are again form evolutions this is again site uski development show ki hui hai add karte now over here this person has played with different shapes on a same site and then after making a block model of it this person is watching these in 3d views also and maybe then making out that which option to go for so this automatically you know practice that this automatically makes you decide what to go for which particular thing is better for you you can again talk in both form evolution and section also again this these are some sketches of form evolution you can sketch them you can make a 3d 
anything which you are good at anything you can communicate better in this kind of evolution can be there now it can be evidence based or user based also like you are focusing upon barrier free environment so this is your thrust area of your project that it has to be barrier free my project is going to be griha rated my project is going to be net zero or anything my project is going to be a multi disciplinary design center where i am going to emphasize on these particular topics so it can be an evidence or user based things also it can have these kind of you know uh, now this is a particular uh, table which is very good to uh, see at in terms of organization like design goals mein yahan pe aa raha hai jaise social enhancement cultural viability and economic empowerment ab isme aage kya kiya hai ki design strategies which are supporting this particular design goal which is social enhancement kaise ho sakti hai open areas semi open spaces for informal interaction spaces that can hold symposiums and discourse तो ये हो गए आपके डिजाइन स्ट्रेटेजी अब इन डिजाइन स्ट्रेटेजीज को आप मैनिफेस्ट कैसे करोगे डिजाइन कंपोनेंट्स है विच इज एम्फी थिएटर सेमिनार हॉल तो ये आपकी रिक्वायरमेंट भी आ गई प्रोग्राम भी बन गया एंड दिस एक्चुअली कैन बिकम योर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑल्सो यू कैन हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर वे यू वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट इफ इफ समी इज गोइंग वर्टिकल सो यू कैन टॉक अबाउट टेक्नोलॉजी यू कैन टॉक अबाउट सर्कुलेशन बिल्ट मास इन वन इमेज इट so this is the last part of the presentation which is general checklist uh, this is uh, regarding the site demographics and analysis it's kind of a checklist that you can take a screenshot of and you can uh, you know print it and hang it in front of you like cad drafted detailed site plan with dimensions existing features like koi high high tension line hai trees hai old built up structures hai कोई कॉन्टूअर्स हैं लेवल्स हैं सर्विसेज हैं नेचुरल स्लोप कहाँ जा रही है कौन सी सर्विस साइट पे अवेलेबल है इलेक्ट्रिक पोल्स हैं ये सब मार्क करने हैं देन सेकंड पॉइंट इज एक्सेसिबिलिटी एंड स्कोप ऑफ द साइट द विजुअल फोरग्राउंड बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट अप्रिसिएशन कि आपकी साइट बहुत ही एक नैरो रोड में जा रही है या बहुत वाइड रोड है दैट बिकम्स योर डिजाइन ड्रिवन फोर ओके the uh, you are talking about the visual and physical accessibility then is surrounded urban forces and landscape that means you need to address the broader scenario which is adjacent to the site and not just your own boundary so you don't have to be selfish of your site but people who are coming to your site also how they are reaching there then the character of the adjacent buildings immediate context climate broadly with sketches and infographics site pictures and section so this is just a basic you can add more points to it according to your project also something is missing for your patience for listening this video and all the best for your thesis thank you